What's going on, everyone? I'm Sage, and jumping right back into 10.05, uh, I was a little bit absent from some of the updates, especially right before 10.05, uh, computer complications, a uh, cross between uh, Windows 11 being a pain, uh, brand new RAM sticks being broke, uh, socket sockets for RAM sticks on my uh, motherboard potentially being bad, um, BIOS not being updated, all this kind of stuff. We went through a ton of stuff. Hopefully it's all fixed right now. It seems to be working and functioning. We definitely had to send the RAM sticks and stuff back, but such is uh, technical life. Uh, so hopefully we're back at it and I can uh, pump out some more of these videos, get uh, my mindset out there, and uh, what better time when we just jumped into uh, 10.05 and got a whole bunch of the changes in and some of the stuff has actually changed slightly from my last video. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, jump into it uh, real quickly. So, quick overview of my character, just so you know where I'm at when I'm doing this kind of uh, stuff, and we'll talk about stats and whatnot uh, in the conversation as well, is uh, I'm 417 currently equipped. Um, as far as, like, stats inside uh, Feral Form, give it a second here, boom, there it is, 34 crit, 18 haste, uh, then versus sad, uh, and then mastery is 60%. Um, so one of the things I actually changed up a little bit going into stats is that with the build, and we'll talk about this later on, it actually incentivizes haste a lot more. Obviously, I was the uh, the pusher for crit mastery, which crit mastery is still very, very strong. Um, and inside mass AOE, crit mastery, I think, is still going to be the play as well as like piercing will target. I think Chris ma crit mastery is still the play. Um, but if you're trying to find a good... Uh, medium ground between mass big mass aoe like algothar is no good or um going into like templar uh, temple or uh, uh court of stars uh haste is going to amplify our current new build and the way we do things uh significantly more um and then uh also uh going over my character i'm 28 92 uh pugging is a pain in the butt especially trying to get into higher keys while pugging so hopefully i can wiggle my way into a, a group soon uh, because trying to get over 3k without consistent people to play with uh is difficult um especially as somebody who uh like i was previously a tank uh for all the previous mythic plus seasons so jumping in there as a dps it's a little bit slower right um but we have proved ourselves to several people, so that's how we're currently getting into keys at the moment, and hopefully it uh, pays off in the end. So let's jump into the builds. Um, so currently, this is the build that I've been running the most. Uh, obviously, this is going to be a pure AoE build. This is Mythic Plus uh, build in general, um, and something that I've used. So let's quickly go over the Druid side, and then we'll go over the talent choices and different alterations, and then we'll jump into single target stuff after that, after the fact. Um, so over here on the left-hand side, uh, things that we lost, we lost Star Surge. Uh, wasn't a big issue. We barely ever used it. We don't owl weave. Owl weaving is not necessary. It's not needed in the slightest anymore. Um, however, going big defensive is uh, is very needed, especially in high keys. There's stuff that does a ton of damage, especially this week it's fortified, so ads are trucking. Um, so going with as tanky as you can, um, like on this side, I even took one point out of uh, feline swiftness just to get a little bit more reduction on well-honed instincts. I don't think you typically need to do that. And I don't actually think it paid any dividends when I did it in that previous dungeon. Um, you probably put it inside like a uh, your sin's vigor. Your sin's vigor is actually very, very strong for a lot of soaking mechanics. Uh, putting two points into this gives you over 500,000 HP pretty much, as well as a ton of armor. So it's very good to bear weave, uh, those big, uh, impacting, uh, damage thing so examples would be the aoe soak uh for fenrir that now has an animation and a cast time so you can 100 percent bear form that especially also when you like run out for the leap you can bear form that as well hopefully you don't have to run out for too many leaps so you have a rogue or like me you're a night elf and you can uh stop the leaps um by shadow melding it off or having a rogue vanish but if you don't uh you can obviously bear form that another big one is like uh inside Ruby life pools, when you get the flame circle around you, that's going to knock you up, knock you in the ads up. It's a good point to uh, bear form that as well. Um, so stuff like that uh, can save your life. So uh, Yersin's Vigor definitely is a good point to take. Um, up here, something that I've kind of more so recently recently in the last like two weeks or so taken is uh, the Verdant Heart. Uh, not necessarily for the Frenzy Regeneration because we're not really popping into bear form specifically to do that. I did take uh, the Frenzy Regeneration node to get down here instead of going with the Rejuvenation one just because I never found myself ever pressing Rejuvenation because it's just never needed, right? However, if you are going to bear form to live one of those two mechanics we talked about, then you could press Frenzy Regeneration. But the real reason uh, is because I wanted the improved Bark Skin for the duration as well as 
down here, uh, Barxian increases all healing received by 20%. So if you're using Barxian, you're using it for a reason, and you're getting healed and amplified that much more, which is just, in my opinion, a good defensive to have. Um, so win-win in, in, in my opinion. Uh, down here, uh, the only thing that I would change up is uh, Gale Wind doesn't seem to be as effective as... I reads to be like i thought it was going to be a good chunk more than it was uh but in practice it doesn't really feel like it's doing a significant amount so probably incessant tempest just getting the cdr on it uh or the just yeah cooldown reduction on it is probably just better uh allows you to get more stops especially in uh things like the last trash in uh, algathar's academy or uh halls of valor there's a ton of trash as well as there's healing runes if the healing runes go off you can knock things out of it obviously saying when this would be a huge uh win in those scenarios um in most keys i would still say go with nature's vigil uh nature's vigil is very very strong as well as obviously like having a vortex vortex is super super strong as well as it allows you to crowd control uh like and stack up things if you need to so like imps and quarter stars you can put uh vortex on them and then typhoon them which is a cool way to mass interrupt them but keep them all where everybody can just burn them down. Um, and then uh, Nature's Vigil is a very strong heal that's off the GCD that you can press anytime that there's going to be a lot of damage out. So like when you have those uh, Storm Tempests going off inside Ruby Life Pool, it's a good way to help out the healer. Um, obviously, it's very good for affixes like uh, Grievous, uh, Bursting, stuff like that. Um, so uh, past that, uh, not too much has uh, changed from my previous discussion over here on this side. Um, and high mythic plus, I would say go as tanky as you possibly can. If you absolutely need to take like innervate, or if your healer is having some issues, then you know obviously go this route. These are very strong uh, across the board, but you need to live, so make sure you live. Jumping over to the right hand side, a lot of our damage has kind of changed on how it deals damage, and our priority uh, on what we're prioritizing has changed uh, and shifted around, and that's what I want to talk about. So. Um, Pretty much what they did is uh, our bleeds got nerfed, right? So uh, our dreadful bleeding got nerfed from 20% down to 15%. Uh, Circle knife and deaths uh, got nerfed from 25% to 20%. Um, but they changed up some talent nodes for us, making them one point. So like Taste for Blood is now 5% for a one point node. So it's 5% increased damage uh, for each of our bleeds on a target for Ferocious Bite. They also ramped up our Rampant Ferocity and actually changed it back to its original state where it's a uh, 35% instead of 25%. Uh, they also increased the t uh, Terror Open Wounds from 65% uh, back up to 70%. Um, and then they buffed up Relentless Predator, uh, making it 40%. Uh, so you can bite at 30 energy is pretty much what that comes out to and so with the changes that they've done with these with the structure and us dr uh, driving more into bites and rampant ferocity uh is we want to get this to proc as much as humanly possible previously it was more of a modifier thing like it still did damage rampant ferocity still did damage it just didn't do a lot of damage right uh with it being at 25 percent with us not taking taste for blood um with them nerfing uh saber tooth originally uh, they haven't nerfed it now but they did nerf it in, uh, initially from uh 20 percent to 15 percent so with them doing all that stuff initially bites weren't doing the majority of our damage inside aoe it was still something you did but you only ever press a bite when it procced off of apex uh and you weren't really trying to super gear for that now it's kind of shifted because now rapid ferocity plus taste for blood plus uh your saber tooth is a very dr deadly combination and especially if you get a ton of procs very very quickly uh, you can do a ton of damage uh outside of cds this is very very strong within cds obviously more so in, within cds but it gives you a ton of burst and consistent high damage um if you can get the procs to to keep coming out and the way to get procs to uh, keep generating is to have a little bit more haste uh or have 30 mobs right one of the two because the percentage of proc rate still hasn't changed from Apex. So Apex is still a 4% chance per tick on all of your rips to generate a free, full, damaging, ferocious bite. And so what that means is we want now to get as many of these procs as humanly possible. And we want to use them immediately. Um, and in order to do that, haste is going to help us get those tick rates faster, especially in non-mass AoE. In mass AoE, it's not as essential because you're getting the amplification of those 4% across 20 30 mobs whatever it is um so like algathars and no kid having high haste isn't exactly going to benefit you too much on the proc rate of your apex because you're already going to get it right you're going to get it every other gcd almost or every two gcds you'll get a free apex 
proc bite, depending on how big your tank pulls and so on and so forth. But not every dungeon is that way. Not every uh, scenario is that way. Even inside those dungeons, uh, there are times where you're fighting five mobs, four mobs. Uh, inside Noked, you have times where you're fighting, um, you know, just a, a small pack of mobs, uh, especially with like the uh, totems. Like one of the totems only has like three, four mobs around it. Um, so like you do have those times where you're you're you know, as well as obviously over all of the other dungeons, temple, court of stars, stuff like that. You're going to have a much lower mob density so uh, having something to increase the proc rate since we're heavily reliant on that proc rate now like i say heavily reliant but it's just like if you're trying to optimize your damage and do as much you want to proc as much as possible because we are just more of a apex proccing rampant ferocity aoeing while having our bleeds up on everything consistently uh, our priority previously used to be Primal Wrath as much as humanly possible, and press Ferocious Bite whenever it procced. Uh, now, you don't necessarily need to do that. You still want to as much as possible, because they obviously they still buffed it, but they did nerf our, our bleeds slightly. Uh, but they, I would say, overcompensated it in a sen sense with how our actual abilities work, because now if we can proc more free bites, you're actually just going to do more damage. You're going to outweigh that damage by a lot. Because don't forget, we also got a 3% buff to all of our stuff uh, before 1005 came out uh, so we got a buff to all of that uh, by three percent and then 1005 came out and we got a small a slight nerf uh, to all of our bleeds and stuff so you could actually say we only lost like two percent on our bleeds um, between the transition from that three percent till now um, but we gained a ton of that ferocious bite damage so our aoe definitely skyrocketed um, so going into haste definitely is going to help you get those procs. Uh, so I would say now is actually a time to try to go towards it. Now, do I think you need to completely get rid of all your crit? No, I don't think you need to completely get rid of all of your crit. Crit is still very good, very essential for us. It's just a lot of your damage is going to be on that cleave and that proc. Now, going over this build, one of the big things that we actually notice is that we're not taking tireless energy anymore, which makes you feel it quite a bit uh, inside the build, is that you feel energy starved way more uh, on low targets than you did in the past. Um, and there are ways around that. Uh, so if we're looking at this build, uh, Terrapin Wounds obviously came up to this first bracket tier, so that's why we're not taking this. That's where that point came from up here at the top. But it also saves us from like single target having to take Terrapin Wounds and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, uh, you don't take tear open or, or tearless energy, you take tear open wounds, and then coming down here, uh, there are builds that are taking Relentless Predator overtaking Infected Wounds. Uh, that's 30% across your rakes, though, especially double rakes, um, to get this, which allows you to bite at that 30% because you are biting outside of just procs now. Um, so you'll put up your Primal Wrath, and then you'll go into a bite. If you have a proc, you bite, um, and then you can go into Primal Wrath again. You still want to try to Primal Wrath before the four seconds, but especially inside your cooldown window, Windows. you don't need to just back to back primal wrath because it's not as strong as it was previously and the bites are just giving you that much more upfront damage so you want to make sure you're biting uh and using those procs as soon as possible so you can use you can generate the next proc um but using relentless predator is something i've tested out it felt good it definitely uh took away a lot of the energy starvation areas that i felt uh in single target um so like i would definitely say that that's a point that you could validate if you wanted to change that up you could even take off moment of clarity and go into relentless predator but you're going to sacrifice some damage and some energy versus just pure energy right um which it could pay out you know it, it could pay out uh moment of clarity is not the highest amount of damage increase over everything it's just a good middle ground between energy and damage which is something we've talked about several times in the past um which is why some in the future and we'll talk about this a little bit later is why it might not be in the the finalized build once we get stats and everything completely corrected but inside this build you are getting a little bit of energy from moment of clarity from uh, frantic momentum and from soul of the forest so you do get a little bit of energy from there it's just you want to make sure that you're not wasting any of your energy so you want to make sure that you're not overriding stuff before it needs to be overridden making sure that you're putting your bleeds on targets that don't have them before refreshing them on targets that do have them so on and so forth um, in order to optimize your energy um, across the board does in single target you do feel energy starved every once in a while though uh, at least with my current stats um so i would say that getting more haste is going to assist with that as well as you know we could take either a point in tireless energy or a point in relentless predator you're just going to lose a little bit of damage in it but losing a little bit of damage to have a consistent fluid uh good rotation is 
probably a good sacrifice, uh, in my opinion, over the ladder where you're just sitting there pulling and doing nothing. Well, you know, you want to be pressing more abilities, especially in AoE. Single target pulling is not that bad as long as you have all your bleeds and stuff up. But in AoE, pulling is a feel bad moment. So, um, but I don't feel like I'm pulling too often in AoE, especially with our procs um, and the energy refund that we're getting from like Soul of the Forest and our free bites and so on. So it's just purely that single target that needs a little bit of work on. I think with more haste, you're going to get a little bit more energy regeneration, um, but you're also going to get more uh, Apex procs, as well as uh, your cooldown rate on Brutal Slash is going to charge faster, right? Because it's affected by haste. So like currently my recharge rate is 6.8. Um, and as you get more haste, this will drop down. So currently haste mastery, uh, I can't really say it's a haste mastery build. I would say just try to get a little bit more haste because I still have a significant amount more crit uh, than I do have haste. Uh, obviously, way more mastery uh, percentage anyway. Um, mastery, we obviously scale with very, very strongly as Feral Druids, so you don't need as much mastery as you do need the other ones to get good percentage points. Um, as well as we're still using like File of Corrupted Rage um, it, for crit. Uh, it gives you a ton of crit, gives you about 8% or so from what I've seen crit, so like it's very strong. And then on top of that, like using a buzzing rune to give you additional crit, you might swap that over to a howling rune now to give you a little more haste if you're trying to bridge the gap there a little bit more, um, stuff like that. Um, I would say don't try to swap all of your gear over to just haste just yet. Like you do want more haste, I would say, than we did previously, but... Uh, there's a good middle ground there because in mass AOE, haste is not as valuable because you're going to have more chances to proc uh, and crit's just going to give you more damage. However, in low target cleave fights, you're going to want more haste. That way you can proc more often because our build is more uh, feels more fluid and does way more damage if you have cleave and are able to proc. Um, so one of the builds obviously jumps off this and goes into Relentless Predator. Uh, the other things that are up for discussion here are, are also Wild Slashes. Uh, and the reason why Wild Slashes is up for discussion is because uh, Lion Strength is also up for discussion. So if we put this point back up here, uh, or we, I guess we can put this point over here since we're talking about that uh, build. Um, if you were to take uh, Lion Strength, Lion Strength inside this scenario in mass AoE is definitely going to be the play in my opinion and that's because in mass aoe you're going mass aoe and maybe once you get to a point where you have a ton of haste lion strength might be the play just because you're going to get a ton of procs and you're never going to be able to have blood talons on all of those procs like it's just not ever going to happen uh, so having 15 percent over all of your your procs as well as all of your bleeds uh your primal wrath uh rips across everything is going to be significantly stronger than having half of them with uh, blood talents on it because you're not going to be able to generate enough to get across all of them right it's just not going to happen especially if you're proccing every other gcd or every two gcds um proccing a free apex that's it, you're just never going to have blood talents to amplify all of that so having line strength to facilitate that in mass aoe or like i said once you get to a certain amount of haste i don't know where that's at it could be 30 percent. it could be more than that but currently i would say that in mass aoe lion strength would probably be the play inside lower cleave targets and you don't have a massive amount of haste like i have 18 i think blood talons is going to be the play which is cool that they did the swap around but that's why a uh, wild slashes would be up for debate because uh if you're running lion strength then wild slashes plays into that decently well because it lessens the strain on rotation right it also increases the damage of thrash as well um, in general i think i'm probably going to do brutal slashes because if you're going for more of a haste build anyway it's going to make brutal slash better because the recharge rate is just going to be lower and you don't want to just be spamming out one ability because brutal slash is still stronger than swipe is currently I don't think any of that's changed really um and inside this aoe build you're not taking like merciless claws or something that's giving uh that 10 percent increase to it uh because it's just that's the 10 percent increase over your brutal slash where your swipe just isn't strong enough it's just not a high enough proportion of your damage to warrant it um so I, would, I still think brutal slash is going to be the play but there is a discussion about wild slashes and uh lion strength versus uh blood talons uh like i said I think mass AoE, and if you have a ton of haste and you can proc a lot, then Lion Strength is going to come ahead uh, in low cleave target fights or single target or any of that stuff. Blood Towns is probably going to be the play. This is still going to be the stronger play on like boss fights and stuff like that um, going forward. Uh, and then uh, for, let's see, let's jump back over to the build that I actually play, which is this. 
going down into here, taking that incarnation, uh, taking the carnivorous instincts, blood talons. So over here, the discussion between these two, uh, I did previously take invoke a significant portion of the time that I went into those uh, dungeons that have low mob density. Um, so going into Temple or going to Court of Stars or something like that, I would take Convoke. Uh, it did feel like it was strong uh, for that burst, especially if you're going into it and you're doing like a Grief Torch opener, uh, like, well, Tiger's Fury rake into a Grief Torch opener into, uh, you know, getting that first rip out and then Convoking. Uh, like that was a lot of burst damage very, very quickly, um, which is something I did uh, that felt good uh, inside those kind of dungeons. And Convoke the Spirits did get, a, did get kind of a slight buff with the way that Ferocious Bite works now because since Ferocious Bite got buffed and Rampant Ferocity got buffed, any of the bites that happen within Convoke, even add a four combo point ferocious bite because that's what they are inside convoke now um are going to be stronger right they're going to aoe 35 uh, percent of their damage and they're going to be 15 to 20 percent uh stronger depending on what you have going on how many bleeds you have on a target if you have you know your additional frenzy bleed going on stuff so on and so forth um so convoke the spirits not a bad take i do think in the majority of dungeons though that incarnation is going to be the play because this is playing to your strengths uh so playing to your strengths feral druid is very good at mass aoe high sustained aoe damage i would say um and incarnation facilitates that especially in higher mythic plus you're going to have your mobs are going to live that long right they're going to live long enough to have your full 30 seconds the full duration the full util uh, utilization of your incarnation um and that's where you, you're trying to play you amplify what you're good at uh, and not try to just be the best of everything um, i would say that if it's a tyr tyrannical and you wanted to have something that's maybe a little bit bursty you could go with convoke on those scenarios but Ultimately, I do think Incarnation is going to be the play for the time being. Um, but I don't think either one's like super superior over the other, to be honest. Um, but Incarnation for now. Um, and ultimately, this is the build I would play. I think later on, if I got a ton of haste, if I got somewhere around that 30% marker or something like that for haste, I might actually drop Moment of Clarity and go into Sudden Ambush. Sudden Ambush got changed from the 2-point node down to a 1-point node, um, giving you a 6% instead of a 5% uh, for it, so you have a 30% chance. You no longer ha can get to the 50% chance, but hardly anybody in AoE specifically ever took 2 points into it. It just wasn't worthwhile for the second point. Um, but 1 point was, and so now it's a little bit better for the one point node um but having 60 percent increased damage over two of your rakes that you place out on targets is just going to be more overall damage than the damage moment of clarity can give you it's not going to be any more energy though is the problem and that's why currently i would say go with moment of clarity depending on you know your haste and how you feel uh with your energy regeneration um but i think later on if i had more haste i would probably uh haste or energy regeneration in general that I would go with Sudden Ambush to get that increased damage because we're taking Infected Wounds with this build, Double Clawed Rake. Um, so this is just going to amplify your damage across the board. And Rake is still one of your highest damaging abilities versus uh, Thrash, Brutal Slash aren't your highest damaging abilities. They don't do bad, but they're definitely not your highest. Um, and that's what I would, I would, I think later on, that's, that's probably what's going to change between the build. So it would end up being something like... Whew, this for, like I said, low cleave, this for high cleave. So if I had this one, it'd probably have high haste. So you might probably just have line strength all the time at that point. Um, so this is probably a build, I would say, if you have really good energy regeneration, you have good proc percentage, uh, like you're getting a lot of procs to happen, even in low cleave to high cleave fights. Like obviously high cleave, you'd have it like every other GCD versus uh, low cleave, you might have it every few GCDs or something like that, but that would still be enough um, to do good damage. Um, ultimately, that's what I think like the end result might end up, but currently, as of right this very second, uh, I would say go with the Moment of Clarity, uh, just to get you a little bit of that energy. Uh, obviously, it's RNG because it's a proc-based ability, uh, but it definitely helps, and it gives you a little bit of damage in the process, uh, and then come down here and grab the rest of our main abilities. Uh, this is currently what I'm running. Now... Let's talk about single target, okay? So single target has changed up for us, and it's kind of funny because it's the opposite as far as energy, uh, because in single target, we have too much energy. Like, it feels like we have way too much energy anyway. Um, so if you were to take off all of this, and we're talking about like a Taros fight here, like pure single target, this isn't going to be like a tyrannical dungeon or something like that. Tyrannical dungeon would be a little bit different. Um, but uh, for like a Taros, pure single target, uh, I would drop obviously all three of these because all of the three of these are completely useless inside a uh, single target. Um, 
there's always that one discussion of primal wrathing instead of ripping, which I just it's not going to be the play uh, because ferocious bite is strong. Um, but what you're going to do, you're going to take merciless claws and you're going to take your two points in tireless energy. Uh, primal claws is just not strong enough, not high enough percentage, especially for two points in it. And protective growth gives you no damage, right? Like it, you're never going to take this unless you're, maybe you're doing PVP, but PVP, I honestly think that you would prioritize damage over 5% uh, DR, but who knows? Um, then uh, jumping over here, uh, this row is actually very strong for a single target now. So you're going to take Taste for Blood, Infected Wounds, Survival Instincts, and Sudden Ambush. You're going to skip out on Rapid Ferocity. Uh, you're going to go take Predatory Swiftness. Uh, you're going to take your Berserk, your Dreadful Bleeding. And then jump down here, Brutal Slash. You're going to take your uh, Frenzy, your Moment of Clarity, your Heart of the Lion, and your Raging Fairy. Now, before I jump down here, obviously I've skipped over our little Lunar Inspiration that's been moved from up here, uh, up here to down here again, and it obviously got rebuffed. The problem is, is that in Taros, at least when I did it uh, this week, uh, after the changes had happened and everything, um, it was doing about 4% overall damage for me, and the point that it's going to compete with as we complete this build is going to be Carnivorous Instincts, which is 6%. You would take one point of Carnivorous Instincts to get your Lunar Inspiration, which is 4%. So 4% versus 6%, and that's where the, the issue lies, is that for me, it just wasn't strong enough, um, and it was super obvious. As well as it obviously adds another thing to track inside your rotation, uh, adding a, taking away a GCD from doing a different damaging ability to doing Lunar Inspiration. So it's still just, in my opinion, not worth it. Uh, specifically because since it doesn't scale with our mastery at all, um, and the only thing that it's snapshotting with is our uh, Tiger's Fury, that it's just not getting the damage it needs in order to be competitive at the level that we're doing, um, because everything else is just outscaling it now, because all of our other bleeds are just outscaling it, Ferocious Bites way outscaling it, so like it's just not competitive in that scenario anymore. Early on, back in Bait and stuff, when Lunar Inspiration was really strong, it was also because we didn't have a ton of mastery, you know, we were, obviously there was different tuning at the time too, um, but things felt different. It's kind of like a Glacial Fury. Glacial Fury at the beginning of Dragonflight felt super, super strong as a file, right? It did a ton of damage, but it's a static number. It never changed. But all of the rest of our stuff grew stronger and stronger around it. So eventually, Glacial Fury became not good for anybody, unless you're using it on alt or something, because it's a static amount of damage. And this is kind of what Lunar Inspiration happened to. Lunar Inspiration just can't scale up anymore, uh, unless you have, like, Hiverse, right? Um, so I think that's why it's on honestly fallen off. So in order for it to be competitive with our stuff, I think it actually does need additional buff if they're, if they want us to actually use it anyway. Um, but you're going to jump down here. You're going to take your carnivorous instincts. You're going to take your blood talons for single target. Uh, there's no competitive competitive nature here because you're not proccing more um so you're taking blood talons uh you're going to take adaptive form you're going to take feral frenzy uh then over here you're going to go down the center you're going to take frantic momentum you have to take these two that's not an option right i've got to get that circle of life and death even though it's nerfed by five percent still take it and then you're going to take an incar um i think this is going to be our single target uh go to uh which is kind of cool because it really gives us everything that you could possibly want to use on single target like everything else wouldn't really benefit you too much on single target um obviously no value single target uh all these no value single target no value single target this one would if it if you could take it right this one would actually be something if it could do six percent or if it could do more than six percent if it was back to doing like eight to nine percent of your overall which is some of the sims or it's not some of the sims some of the uh damage meters i had when we were testing it in the past it was doing eight to nine percent overall damage like if it went back to doing something like that even paired up with nurturing instincts then sure you you take it um you would take the one point out of carnivores and throw it up here um but it's just not worth it in my opinion like uh, even feral frenzy which you only press every 45 seconds is still out beating that damage um feral frenzy also does pretty good damage when you pair it up with the uh, frenzy um but yeah currently lunar inspiration doesn't seem like it uh made the the damage check to get in but i could be wrong on this obviously it's still very uh, new and people are trying out different builds and stuff like that going to uh different boss fights and so on um so We'll, we'll have to, we'll, we'll wait and see a little bit more on that, but in my opinion, and what I've played and tested, it just didn't uh, seem like it cut. The only other thing that I think that might be a potential uh, thing in single target would actually be trying to jump over here to Apex uh, and get the procs off of that. If you had high haste uh, inside the build and you weren't going for that like massive 
crit mastery build, which this would definitely be crit mastery because you definitely don't need energy regeneration for haste. But if you had haste anyway because of mythic plus builds or something like that, and you wanted to attempt to, you know, uh, see if you can proc build it, uh, you could definitely uh, pull off the points here, take off your uh, frantic momentum, and come over here. So you're losing out on in car, and you're losing out on frantic momentum, but you're only losing out on that 10 seconds uh, from it. So you're losing out on 10 seconds of in car to gain the potential for procs. Uh, so this has a good chance of actually being played as well. Uh, well, that has a good chance. Uh, this has a good chance of being played in single target as well, uh, just because the bite procs are just that strong and if you can get a lot of them but this would be especially in single target this would be highly uh this would be like kind of a like gamba build uh where you gambling for procs uh to come ahead in your damage so if you got a ton of procs on a fight you could be really really good but if you got zero procs or obviously not zero but very minimal procs on a fight then obviously you're going to do very low damage um so i think in car is probably the better choice just for consistency um but this could come come ahead too. Obviously, you're getting so much energy. Like this paired up here, Omen of Clarity with Moment of Clarity with Cat's Curiosity is a ton of energy in itself. But then you also have double tireless energy. Like there's no way you're ever energy starved for any of this stuff, which definitely means that like single target, I don't think you ever run Relentless Predator, um, just because you're gonna have an overwhelming amount of energy. Um, and then if you run this, you're also getting procs, right? So you're getting free procs that are free energy, so so on and so forth. Um, but personally. I definitely would go with uh, the in-car uh, for single target. And then, uh, you know, obviously I went over the, the build for Mythic Plus, and it's kind of variations at the moment. Uh, Tyrannical is going to be a different beast. Uh, Tyrannical uh, for dungeons, I definitely think you're still going to take all of the regular uh, AoE uh, points uh, all the way down, uh, but you're probably going to lose out on one point in Carnivorous and take it over an Adaptive Swarm. Um, just to get that increased single target, but I don't think too much else is going to change on the build, uh, unless you feel like your energy starved, and maybe you actually forego the moment of clarity, take a tireless energy or relentless predator, uh, and lose the damage on that, so that you get a little bit more single target uh, inside those tyrannical weeks. Uh, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see what it feels like uh, going forward. So. Uh, Ultimately, uh, I think that it was a net gain for us across the board, especially since most fights inside the raid and uh, obviously Mythic Plus is cleave to AoE heavy. Um, so I think that that suits us well. We're more proc based now, like we need to utilize those procs significantly more. And we want to try to optimize getting more procs. So haste definitely is going to help affect that slightly. Uh, in those low cleave target scenarios, high cleave, it doesn't really matter. Uh, going crit mastery is fine. Um, and uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this in the, in the comment uh, below. Uh, hopefully I touched up on everything. I, uh, I want to have more videos coming out and showing you guys what I've done and, you know, some of the dungeons and stuff that I've been uh, messing around in. Um, and hopefully we get into, you know, a concrete group. I have a couple groups currently that are potential uh, liars for, for me to go and join them for some high end Mythic Plus pushing. And uh, hopefully it works out and I'll keep you guys up to date on that content. Uh, if you guys like this content, like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, once again, uh, let me know of uh, what you think is going to be the play. And if there's any kind of changes, alterations or something, let me know. Like, I love looking at this stuff. I love thinking about it. Um, you know, uh, I played Feral Druid for a stupid amount of time. So, you know, let me know what you guys think of the build. And let me know if you're enjoying Feral. Um, past that, uh, now the computer's up and running, I am going to try to stream again. I know I keep saying that, and I'm on my, my stream very rarely. But uh, computer problems uh, kind of put a botch in that so hopefully that all uh, evens itself out here relatively quickly and uh, i'll be able to uh you know stream content there as well as give you guys more uh video content here so stay tuned for all that thank you guys again and i will see you all in the next video all right bye, -bye.